this video is a little bit all over the place. Dealing with a lot of jobs that the car came to me with early on in the ownership, which I've actually had fixed for quite a while, but I've not really had a, a video to put them into and stitch everything together. So that's what this video will be covering. You can hear it's running at the moment, it's not too loud. One of the things that I've had fixed is the exhaust, which, uh, yeah, that proved to be an interesting challenge. Some of the parts of this car are very easy to get hold of and some aren't, and the exhaust is very much a case in point. Trackwood ends get sorted, headlight alignment gets sorted as well, and most of the things in this video is not me doing them. I've actually decided to take these jobs to a garage because sometimes you have to know your own limits. That's probably one of the most important things with owning a classic car. By all means, have a go, try and do it yourself because sometimes the jobs aren't that difficult, but with a bit of experience, you do learn what things you can and can't do yourself and what things you don't want to do yourself. Let's get into the video then. And yeah, I'll do my best to make this cohesive for you. Let's get another small job sorted out on this. I'm not sure exactly how clear this is. The steering wheel in the car is straight and this wheel is pointing where it should be. That wheel is off over there somewhere. It's been like this since I got the car and I just haven't got around to it. What it needs is the tracking done. But while I'm in there, I might as well put new track rod ends on as well. So why aren't I doing the track rods myself? I don't have much luck with them. I've done them on pretty much every car I've had, and apart from one occasion, they've always fought me. So this is a job I'm taking to a local garage. While it's there, I'll get these headlights aligned properly. I've had a best guess, but again, I don't have the equipment to do it properly at home, and I'd rather they be set correctly. So for once, I'm not going to actually film a job to show you how to do it. If you're fairly confident with doing track rod ends, then by all means do it yourself. But normally I find the old ones are rusted and seized up and I have a devil of a job getting them off with heat, tools, whatever. You mention it, I've tried it and usually I can't do it and it has to go to a garage for somebody else to do anyway. So I'm just going to cut out the middleman, take it to the garage to begin with. This right here is your track rod and that's your track rod end. These will probably come undone okay, honestly. I, they're not as bad looking as they might be. That's good, it means the garage spends less time, costs me less money. Um, but I'm going to need to get the tracking done anyway once they've been replaced, so they might as well do both things at once for me. So you have your track rod end here, and your locking nut, and the thread is what's adjusting the wheel for which way it points and I can make a good guess at that, um, but better if somebody else does it. I've also noticed just as I've come under here is this little bit of rust here that needs fixing, so that's a job to do. Uh, the other side looks much the same as this, it's a little bit more rusty, and yeah, we'll be doing that today. And I'll be able to show you an after when it's finished. These are the new ones that are going on. These are new old stock types. This little plastic cover here just protects the, uh, the rubber boot. I think that comes off when they actually fit them. I think that's just to protect everything. I don't think that actually lives on there permanently. So they'll put them on that way round. That will tighten it up to the hub and that will go on the track rod end. And then you rotate it a sufficient number of times to set the tracking. Hopefully that will then mean as well that my steering wheel sits straight because that's been quite annoying. And it prevents the tyres from wearing badly because I have brand new tyres on and I don't want to spoil them by having poor tracking. We're back from the garage. Didn't cost as much as I was expecting, which is nice. Only thing is, they couldn't do the tracking. Turns out they don't actually do it, so they could do the other jobs. Headlights are nicely aligned now so it's not cross-eyed anymore. Uh, and of course they've not really changed the tracking on this side. They've pulled this side in a bit, and these going in a bit further. 
there's another garage I'm going to visit tomorrow and they'll be able to sort this out. I already know, even without the tracking being done, that it's better. Uh, there's a certain wooliness to the steering that it had before, which it doesn't have now, so I'm happy about that. Always worth checking when you have new parts installed, just in case. And as you can see, nice new parts. I don't think they had much of a fight, they certainly didn't mention anything, so hopefully it went fairly smoothly, but it's a job I'm glad I didn't have to do. And it does mean that when I get the tracking done tomorrow, the other garage is going to have an easier time of it. We are back from garage two, and as you can see, they've sorted the tracking out. Now the bodywork isn't even side to side, there's still alignment things to do, but this wheel and this wheel now point where they should. The steering wheel now points where it should, and the car handles a lot better, unsurprisingly. In the words of the guy that did it, that side was miles out, so yeah. It's a lot nicer to drive now, and that's one more box ticked off, which is good. The other advantage to taking the car to the garages is it gave me a bit of a heads up on what's more important for MOT. Obviously, you know the history of this car, and I know the history of this car, but a garage I've never been to before doesn't. So, of course, they were a bit concerned about the condition of the bodywork, the rear arches, the sills. This isn't anything I don't know about, so that's not a concern for me personally. These are jobs that are going to be done anyway. What it means is it's allowed me to prioritise the jobs that remain a little bit better. So, of course, on the bodywork side of things, the next job is going to be the passenger side rear arch. I am currently struggling to find a repair panel to do the inner with, but I do have one for the outer, and I know that side is nowhere near as bad as this side is. The other bodywork issue is the cells need work. Now, we didn't go into specifics, but I do know there's a couple of small areas on the cells that are a bit tender particularly at the trailing edges. This side, there's one spot I'd like to address. This side I've not really investigated. Sills are a lot easier to get hold of for this car, so that shouldn't be a problem. The exhaust is definitely blowing on that flexi joint. So, the, what you can see coming up there, it's on full choke at the minute because it's very cold. That's all coming off the flow on the exhaust underneath. So, once it warms up, it stops doing that. And of course, once it's off choke, it's not making, well, that. It's not oil, you can smell it's running rich. The really good thing is the temperature gauge is actually moving at idle. And before, obviously, with there being no thermostat in, I was getting nothing at all. So I'm happier about that. That means the car will probably warm up more normally, which will be better for the car in general. And it means the heaters will actually be warm when it's cold. Because I've been driving around with gloves on out of necessity rather than style. Um, see me drive this around, start it and all the rest of it, the exhaust is blowing and uh, that means getting underneath the car which is why I'm wearing this. I haven't been able to find any new exhaust parts yet, I would like to put a new exhaust on the car but it's something I've not been able to find. I'm going to just show you underneath the car how good access is actually for this job and what it is that's wrong. One really good thing about the Maestro is you don't need to jack it up to see the exhaust. So that spring there is what holds the tension on, as far as I can understand it, on the clamp for the flexi join. And that's what's blowing. I don't know if it's the flexi itself or the join just behind it. I'm going to get the car up on an axle stand just so I can get underneath here. I'm not quite this thin.
Right, car up on the stand. Now access is actually quite good. Don't need to take the wheel off, it's not in my way. At least not yet. So this is the spring I was mentioning earlier and I think it's blowing on this join here. It's been doing it since I got the car. But it may also be blowing on this section. If it is this, then it probably means new exhaust time. As far as I can tell, the exhaust doesn't have any holes in it. It's not got any serious corrosion, like there's no squashing on here you sometimes get with exhausts when they've been bashed into things. Uh, it seems fairly healthy, all things considered. Just a bit surface rusty, as you would expect from the mileage and the age. I don't think I need to undo this clamp, because that clamp there, all that seems to do is hold onto the downpipes here to provide a bracket for this spring to pull against, where are we, to pull against that hook which just makes sure that this bit of the exhaust is sort of pulled this way, shoving it into this pipe, which of course then goes up to the engine and to the downpipe. There is somewhere around here an oil leak. Um, you can just see it dripping there, which is why I've got the gloves on today. These are just gardening gloves. Um, I find these are actually quite practical for exhaust stuff. They're quite grippy and they give you a decent amount of mobility. So, And they're cheap, which is always good. I find the latex gloves tend to tear apart when you're doing these kind of jobs. Oh, actually, uh -huh. I said that's a join, that's not a join. Because your join is actually there. Now I know that join isn't blowing. So I guess it must be the flexi that's blowing, so I can't actually do anything about that. I don't think. Let's start it up and see if we can see anything. Okay, here we are under the car. You can see towards the right of the screen there's a shiny silver thing. That is new exhaust clamps. And as we move towards the front, there's where the blow was. And there's the downpipe going up there with some new bolts. Now, I got somebody else to do this job for me. And I'm very glad I did because they had to get a lot of heat on it to separate that join there. Stud snapped, so they used bolts and nuts to cure the problem up there. It was just a pain in the bum. The manifold on the car wasn't damaged and they wanted to keep it that way, so that's why it's done like that. The downpipe itself is not from a 1.3 manual, it's from a 1.6 automatic. And when you do that, you have to bear in mind that the this end of it, sleeves with the rest of the exhaust the opposite way round. It's otherwise identical. Thankfully, the place I took it to knew what they were doing and sorted it all out for me. And now I have a lovely exhaust that doesn't blow.
as you can hear, it's idling a lot nicer than it was. It's not as sparky sounding. See where the old manifold is up here. And although this looks like old exhaust, it's brand new. It's just exhaust go like that very quickly. It's just mild steel, it's an original car. And yeah, the heat cycles do that to them. The only thing I've noticed is occasionally on this corner, because this rocker cover gasket is still leaking, I occasionally get some bubbles here, so I think the manifold isn't quite sealed. So I probably need to put some new gaskets in. It's still on choke at the moment, it's still cold. So it's running a little bit rich. I've still got to sort all of that out. Just having the time, that's the problem. hear the idles a lot better than it used to be. The more I've used the car the better it's got, which is not that surprising really, cars don't like being stood. because the points and condenser are okay until it's a damp day and it's a bit of a nuisance. It's about £30, £40, made a big difference on the Princess when it came to starting throughout the autumn and winter. Other than that, things are going quite well. I don't think it was listening, I think we'll get away with it. I don't think there's going to be too many difficult things to sort out now. Everything feels like it's within my abilities, my skill set, and the tools and such that I've got available to me. So hopefully this is the last bit of garage work that it's going to need for a while. We'll see come MOT when we do that later this year.